Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and today I'm going to go ahead and continue with the image that I was drawing last week. However, I would like to point out that the intro to this video sounded a little bit different. The music that you're listening to right now is now officially going to be my theme song. Now, it may alter a little bit within the next coming weeks or something, but we will have to see if that's even needed. Uh, basically, this was a little bit of a score that was written by Sam. Sandra 011 on Fiverr. I hired her to go ahead and make this score. I gave her a little bit of uh, an idea as to what two different things to get inspiration from and this is what she came up with and uh, yeah she specializes in uh, making children's music you can actually see it right here children's song here uh, we'll sing with kids voice and such now I don't, didn't really want this to sound like a children's song and I don't think it does but uh, it was pretty much a coin toss between her and somebody who makes uh, things like theatrical musical scores uh, but I didn't really want it to sound like a theatrical music musical score either uh, and so I thought that something that sounded a little bit more like uh, just you know a jingle uh, would probably work best uh, and so she's pretty much exactly what I was looking for in that regard yeah uh, you can see here she says that she's a professional singer with long-term experience classically educated flute player and composer with access to very well equipped professional music studio and she's also a video content creator skilled with Photoshop and After Effects and so she's able to provide a complete service with both audio and video media content. Uh, generally she seems to have received an excellent score from everybody that has ever worked with her and uh, so if you are interested in hiring somebody to make a little jingle or uh, a full-on song then feel free to hire her. Again it's Sandra011 on Fiverr okay a link to her profile on Fiverr is in the video description below I couldn't be any more happier than I already am with this but like I said as of right now I'm kind of testing the waters to see how it works with my voiceover and all of that and so some minor alterations might be needed but I don't know that for sure and so I paid a little bit extra to allow me to receive a few edits to the music if needed which I don't think it will be so yeah, let's get on with the video. Okay, so in a little bit, I'll be talking about my theme song again and everything that entails uh, the fact that I have a theme song at this point, but I'll just spend a little bit of time talking about uh, this image and everything like that. Basically, when I left off uh, with the last video, uh, what wound up happening was most of the things were kind of finished, I guess, with the grayscale painting. Uh, except for the guy on the ground, his leg wasn't really rendered very well. A, bun a, a few trees needed to be rendered. Uh, I needed to imply a few things in the background uh, and uh, kind of flesh out what the lighting in the scene is with regards to a light source. And once I did that, once I created the light source and, and everything was fleshed out enough to actually create the light source on the canvas, um, it kind of got me to kind of redefine what what the shadows and highlights needed to be on the canvas and uh, so that wound up being a little bit more work with the with the grayscale than what I had actually originally thought would be involved but it's not too bad it's it's actually just fine but uh, yeah you know I, if you if you guys recall I was saying a, a, a little while back that I wanted to completely avoid doing grayscale painting uh, and the reason for that was because I didn't like working with all of the blending modes I don't like working with thousands of little blending modes here and there. It's okay to have like three or four here and there, but when everything on the canvas is a blending mode, it's like everything on the canvas is behaving erratically because each blending mode has its own different so set of rules. And so the, the colors that you select on, you know, the color picker and stuff like that, uh, on the color wheel and all that, it, it's not the same colors that are being laid down. So sometimes a blending mode won't let you get a darker color. Some, co uh, some blending modes won't let you saturate a color more or, or anything like that and that just gets really convoluted really frustrating over time and so right now I've actually kind of gravitated towards grayscale painting uh, and that's because of the gradient map workflow with coloring that I've kind of uh, nailed down f somewhat recently and so uh, I'm not 
like even though I was saying a while ago, hey, I, this is something that I kind of want to avoid. Yeah, sometimes you'll you'll discover a technique that makes something that you previously wanted to completely avoid, and it makes it so that it's it's actually enjoyable at that point uh, because you've discovered something else that just makes it better. But yeah, here with the painterly style, you know, I, I kind of realized a little bit too late that this image was uh, being created with painterly style. And so rather than trying to render everything from really low resolution to a higher resolution, I, I was just kind of focusing on one little thing at a time. And I think the overall image wound up suffering because of that. And I don't like working like that. I mean, to some extent, yes, with when you're working with line work and such like that, you have to kind of create everything on the on the canvas to some degree uh, low resolution and bring it up a little bit but it you know dealing with lines is a lot easier than dealing with every single freaking pixel on the canvas and trying to increase the resolution of it uh, bit by bit by bit. Also, I'm, I'm really actually used to having my brush thickness varying from being like three pixels thick to being upwards towards grand maximum 15, maybe 20 when doing my line work and just having my, my lines be controlled with my pressure sensitivity, the thickness of my lines being controlled with pressure sensitivity. I've kind of decided that I absolutely hate having a, a brush that behaves anything even remotely like a pencil. And this image totally taught me that. Uh, and, and some of the reason is because uh, just the brush thickness. I mean, in order to actually get a brush, like, I, I, I always felt like I was just mashing my stylus against my screen tablet. And, you know, the, the screen tablet's fairly new and I don't want to, like, freaking abuse it. But everything always felt like it was, like, me mashing on, on the screen. And uh, the brush thickness always had to be at least five pixels thick. At least. I mean, there are a few exceptions to that. But it, unless I wanted to like nitpick every single pixel with uh, you know a, a tiny brush smaller than five pixels and and just spend hours and hours and hours and hours doing that uh, for every single pixel on the canvas, uh, I just I just didn't want to do that. It, it, and it took me it took forever just to influence just one pixel when the brush was smaller than five pixels. Uh, when when the brush was controlling just how dark and how light your lines are. I, so I hated that um, and, and the brush was always so thick that if I wanted to kind of refine things to being a nice fine detail it, it just felt like uh, I was trying to refine something with a gigantic blunt object it just wasn't a it, it wasn't something that I enjoyed doing at all so uh, it, and you know I it, it may sound like I'm repeating stuff from the previous video and to some extent I kind of am but I, I am covering new stuff with what I'm saying um, that I didn't say in the previous video there's some some things that just became much more obvious while working on this this time around that wasn't completely like obvious as a huge problem uh, previously and uh, so yeah um, that's that um, and you know when, when everything just feels like me mashing uh, my stylus against the canvas uh, what, what winds up happening is I, I wind up feeling like a Neanderthal trying to paint and I, I kind of feel like a, a little kid with a, a wad of crayons just balled up in my hand and just on, on, on a piece of paper and, and not really taking anything serious just scribbling a bunch of nonsense on the on the canvas and so it the f the longer and longer I worked on this, I uh, the less and less I wound up taking it seriously. And so there came a point where the the canvas started to kind of look like, hey, that actually looks okay. But if I mess around with it anymore, I'm going to take it even less seriously, and it's probably going to ruin it. So that's sometimes a really tricky uh, moment trying to decipher when is the image finished uh, because like if if you don't know when it's finished sometimes you could just wind up ruining it and maybe maybe I, I pick the right time to to say it's finished but for me it's finished that's that's it that's it that's done uh, but uh, yeah I think what I'm going to do I like I've been trying to do new things with my line work and this was like a absolute extreme in the opposite direction of line work and uh, I just realized way too late that I just decided to do a painterly style. Yay! I think uh, all that really needs to happen is I just need to do my line work normally and then clip a layer inside of my line work and just with, with this clipped layer inside of my line work just kind of change the values of the line work uh, after I get my graphics.
grayscale painting down and kind of see how that works. Uh, that way I, I can kind of grayscale paint my line work. So it's an extra step. It'll kind of slow me down a little bit, but it definitely won't slow me down as, as much as this workflow did. This is kind of ridiculous. But anyways, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of uh, done talking about the image, so I'm going to go back to talking about uh, my theme song. Now, if you guys have been keeping up with the community tab on my channel, uh, around October or December, I said that I wanted to get a theme song and I wanted to start to create a new intro and outro for my videos. And, and creating a theme song seemed like the natural step because, you know, it gets, you know, you get the beat of the music and that gives you something to kind of work with with the entire animation and so uh now that i have that i, I th i'm thinking about at some point in the near future kind of creating a better uh, intro and outro uh initially when i started out on on youtube i had just this static image of my logo and that worked for my intro and my outro when i was just trying to create the assets that i needed in order to create my channel that worked but over time you know i, I needed to actually have something that's a little bit more professional and so I made the the flipping logo uh, and the lightning and that worked pretty well I really enjoyed working on that and to some degree it's it's totally professional I've seen a lot of channels with equally as good or equally as bad a, a you know sort of intro looking graphic going on but you know my, my channel is not just any uh, any sort of channel I mean the, the topic of discussion on my channel is artwork drawing a animation sometimes uh, and so you know it, I should probably have a, a fancier intro and outro and uh, I'm thinking about animated you know animation huh I, I'm not really quite sure if I'm gonna do a 2d animation uh, or a 3d animation I, I think it it may very well be a, a composite of the two I tried actually modeling my mascot like 3d modeling him uh, and you know there's it's weird because like you perceive your 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 character uh, a very specific way as a three-dimensional object uh, when you draw him but when it's all said and done it's still a two-dimensional object that you've just made when you're drawing uh, regardless of how much you're visualizing as a three-dimensional object and when you go about trying to sculpt it you need to start making a bunch of different decisions because you may have been drawing the cheekbones a very specific way but once you get those cheekbones that specific way and you start looking at this sculpt from every angle you start realizing those cheekbones need to be adjusted in a different way um, I, I, it may not necessarily be the cheekbones that, that are the problem with this specific sculpt but uh, it's just an example okay so like uh, there's different choices that you need to make in order to redesign your character to being a 3d model from 2d to 3d and uh, so that that's posed as a, a little bit of a problem for me and you know I initially want I, I kind of want to sculpt my mascot as a nude figure with you know without private parts or anything like that I want this to be PG um, and uh, but uh, basically the whole point of that is to, to have him be anatomically correct with the proportions that I've decided he has um, so that he's more versatile so that if he's wearing a shirt you know I could actually have him take the shirt off if he needed to or whatever just to make him more versatile I mean I don't know any reason why I would have him take off his shirt but that's just an example like it just he might need to be wearing different clothes or something and just having the clothes be you know permanently welded onto his structure that doesn't seem like something that I would want so <clears throat> that's uh, that's where I am with that I, I'm thinking about I'm not really actually thinking about keeping the sculpt that I've done off camera um, for the mascot I, it's just kind of like an experiment but um, you know I've just ran into a number of problems like uh, his foot wasn't coming out right so um, rather than dissolving a bunch of vertices or whatever I wound up deleting them so now I have this non manifold open foot and I tried a number of things you know grid fill didn't work and so I tried to get a high resolution sphere or something and tried to boolean it and union boolean it right there and it, all that did is it, it caused the the sphere that I wanted to union bo boolean to it to disappear it did nothing 
And so I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I might just completely abandon that sculpt, and that's fine if that's the case, uh, because uh, you know sometimes having multiple stabs at something is uh, sometimes a, a good approach because you you get better and better over time. And I'm talking about actually using the sculpting features inside of Blender. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm thinking, it, you know, if I'm going to have my mascot inside of my video intro, uh, he's probably, probably going to be 2D animated, uh, which uh, uh, I'm not really, I, I don't like in-betweening. So uh, I'm going to have to, I don't really want to go back to open tunes. I don't want to spend money to uh, get Kakani. Uh, so I'm going to have to nail down some sort of workflow to get my mascot to move organically with the tools that are currently inside of Blender. And hopefully I might be able to do that. I, I don't know, I might, I might be able to figure it out. Uh, I don't know if the videos where I'm gonna be working on my video intro, if, if those are gonna actually be tutorials or me just experimenting with Blender's grease pencil to, to get it to, to work and see what does work and what doesn't work. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. Um, when I initially made the your first 2D animation inside of Blender, uh, when I initially made that, I, I thought that Blender would have a lot more features for doing all of your in-betweening. And uh, it doesn't. Uh, in order for you to, to really get a nice organic animation, this is the only sort of workflow that I've been able to decipher. You have to go kind of do a frame by frame sort of animation uh, to get a rough a rough animation going on and then once you have that rough animation kind of refined to up to a, a, a point to where you're happy with it uh, at that point you need to kind of just create a new collection create a layer and then just draw one line and then animate like just tween that line throughout the entire animation and then once you need to get a second like once you need to draw another line you create another layer and then you draw that one line and then you just tween it throughout the entire animation and you just repeat that and repeat 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 over and over again and that's a workflow that I have not been looking forward to and some of the reason for that is because uh it sounds like a disorganized mess, and that's some of the reason why I've kind of gotten away from animation within recent history. It's just every time I animate something, it's always just this weird, discombobulated, disorganized mess. It doesn't matter what sort of workflow or what sort of organizational skills I, I try to implement inside of the animation process. It's, it's just, it always winds up being a mess, and I don't want to do my in-betweens uh, at all. I like I'm, I'm so fed up with in-betweening things so but uh, yeah that's what you have to look forward to I guess uh, somewhat soon I guess w me trying to create um, you know uh, a, a video intro and outro for my videos uh, and hopefully the outro will be a separate animation from the intro so here you see me laying, laying down the light in the scene I kind of felt like lower on the canvas everything would be a lot darker you saw that like just a little bit earlier you saw me kind of put one of the shadows of the trees over the guy that's laying down on the ground and i kind of made some of the shadow uh kind of look like it has branches of the tree um i, I don't know if i succeeded at that really because like like i said like <sighs> Everything kind of felt like I was just kind of mashing my stylus against the canvas, and it, that was really frustrating. But anyways, here's the uh, final image. I think the upper half of the image looks much better than the lower half, but that's just my thoughts on the issue. It came out okay, but uh, I don't think I'm going to add this to my portfolio when I launch my website. Anyways, guys, that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys would like to participate with my community a little bit more, feel free to join my Discord. The link is in the video description below. And if you guys would like to support my channel, feel free to click on the image of my mascot in the upper right corner of the screen. It leads to my Patreon. And if you guys have enjoyed this content and would like to see more, feel free to click on anything else that's appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your time.